Rural folk, what is the most creepy thing you've seen or experienced? Part 7. Please make sure you share and subscribe us. Account 1. When I was a child, two of my friends and I decided to explore around an abandoned house that was down the road from us. It had the typical abandoned look paint peeling off everywhere, exposed wood, overgrown plants and vines, broken windows, and missing roof tiles. Inside, it matched the outside. Cupboards broken, floorboards splintered and cracked. Other than the place being extremely empty, we didn't really get any scary vibes from it, nothing paranormal as we'd expect. As we left the house, mildly disappointed, we were walking alongside one of the windows when a very well-dressed, well-groomed man in his 60s, wearing a black dress coat, white shirt, and black tie, came into view. We hadn't seen him inside, never heard anything, yet here was this man just staring at us blankly through the window. My friends and I booked it as fast as we ever ran out of there and back home. It probably was just one of the property owners who happened to be inside the same day we were. There were a few rooms we didn't go into, but good God, that scared the shit out of us. A few years later, the local fire department burnt the place down in a controlled burn. So if it was paranormal, well, it's gone now. Account 2. I used to live 30 minutes away from where I am now in the Philippines. And back then, there weren't any convenience stores or supermarkets nearby in my village. It was all grass, trees, and vines, a perfect place to hide mutilated or sacked bodies. One day, my parents and I drove home from my preschool. Suddenly, my dad went silent and told me not to look. Being stupid enough to disobey, I looked and saw someone hanging from the trees by their neck. We later learned that people were killing themselves due to destitution and personal conflicts. Account 3. A rabbit getting killed by a predator makes a terrifying noise. I grew up in the country and, after being shamed for being scared of the dark, I decided to sit in the woods and meditate to get over it. I heard this awful sound that scared the shit out of me. I talked to my friends who all hunted and they let me know I had heard a rabbit being killed. I wasn't sure if I should be comforted or horrified. Account 4. Explainable story. When the neighbors kept finding deer dragged into trees and eaten, it started to bother everyone. Neighbor kids, including myself, kept seeing neighbors pulling them out of trees. It seemed very unnatural. Turned out it was a mountain lion. Very surreal. Account 5. I used to live in the mountains in northern Alabama growing up. Our house was on the edge of the woods with a paved road leading back to the city limits, which was a good hour and a half away. One night, my brother and I woke up to stomp it. We ran outside to our front porch, and all three of our horses were running in circles around our house at high speed. Normally, these three were the kindest, most gentle of giants, and were pretty old, so they never really got like this unless they were playing. They were frothing at the mouth. Their eyes seemed to be clouded over, and from them, running in circles, their hooves dug into the ground so much that it left a permanent scar where the grass never grew back. My brother and I woke up our dad and he ran outside. While my brother and he chased after the horses, I went behind the house with a flashlight to make sure their gate hadn't fallen over or they hadn't knocked it off its hinge. I held the flashlight in my mouth while pulling the gate open and when I turned my head to look into the pasture, the beam of light caught on the top of antlers. What had looked like a deer at the entrance to the thicket of the forest had no eyes. It was all black and sunken and it stood up with gaunt proportions of its limbs which were way too long to be a regular deer. It used its front legs like arms and pushed branches aside before disappearing. This glance only lasted moments, but the feeling I get when I think about it makes my stomach churn and my heart almost burst. I was only 14 then, 28 now, so I like to think it was just my brain tricking me since my adrenaline was going but I don't think I can just describe the dread that fills me just thinking about how this thing looked. Never had another encounter like it, thank God. Account 6. My husband and I decided to take our then two-year-old and newborn up to a popular picnic spot about an hour from our house. It was a rainy and dreary day, but we all just wanted to get out of the house for a while. The drive was nice despite the weather and the babies were sleeping in the back, all was well. As we drove into the park, we saw a few workers doing cleanup, and every one of them stopped and stared at us as we drove by. No smiles or polite waves, just eerie staring. 
When we pulled up at the restroom for my husband to use, I got this horrible sense of dread. I didn't mention it, but I told my husband we'd just wait in the car and figure out what to do when he got back. He told me to lock the doors after him and he'd only be a minute. All the nearby workers were still stopped and staring at us in the car. All the hairs on my arms were standing up and internal alarm bells were ringing. The workers started edging their way down the slope towards us, slowly but surely. My husband got back and said this place was giving him the creeps. And we left. Thankfully, nothing came of it. But when we were recounting the weirdness to some friends, they told us about some alleged wild panther sightings there. This was in rural Australia. What the heck is a panther doing there? Either way, screw that place, those workers, and trying to pretend not to be terrified when you've just given birth. Account 7. I live in Ireland where there are a lot of stray cats that farmers let roam around to control the local rat population. Recently, they've started coming further into the village, and now, every night, it sounds like someone's climbing around outside my window. The first time I heard it was at Tusak AM. They were tapping on the window and everything, trying to get in. Keep in mind they weren't meowing or making cat noises. It was just one cat walking around on my roof and tapping the window that leads to my room. It was terrifying. I legitimately thought it was a person. Account 8. I used to live in rural Tennessee for a while. My house was at the end of a two-mile-long driveway, and my closest neighbor was halfway down that driveway. We weren't close, but we helped each other out here and there when needed. One night around 11 p.m., I heard someone driving up the driveway. Nobody lived past me, and I had no clue who it could be. I walked over to my front windows and looked outside. Some dude in an SUV was parked in front of my porch. He saw me in the window, waved, then got out and came up to talk to me. I opened my front door, locked the screen, and asked what he needed. He said something about looking for his dog, so I asked who he was and where he lived. This dude looked me in the face and said, Oh, I live just past you there, Crane. and pointed to the First densely all, packed great, trees I surrounding my house. I, I told him I hadn't see seen his dog and apologized for it. UV he said, Okay, whatever. His tracker just led me here, so I figured you would have seen him. him I had Perfect not seen his dog that apparently had a tracker on it. He turned around and walked back to his car. I watched him until he drove far enough game. away that I couldn't hear his tires Despite anymore. Efforts, the next day, my neighbors came over Shit, to collect trash okay? for me. He's they alive. owned a dump truck and saved me the 40-minute drive tower. to town a Jay lot. All the and they asked me and if some you. dude came to my property last night. I said, yeah. And they asked if I knew him. I said, no. Apparently, this dude told my neighbors that he lived at the top of the hill across town. The only thing is, that hill had one house and it was destroyed by a tornado about four years prior. He used the same excuse about his dog, but said it was in their yard. My neighbor had no clue how they got into their yard because, similarly to me, they had a gated yard. I never usually shut mine because it got stuck when you latched it, but my neighbors always had theirs latched, along with a no trespassing or I'll shoot sign. Needless to say, I kept my gate latched and bought a master lock for it after that. I moved about four months after that incident. Crane here. Report. Account 9. When I was growing up, I lived in a neighborhood across from a giant cemetery. I spent many nights drinking and smoking weed in that graveyard. Since the cemetery hadn't had anyone buried in it for over 50 years and the city maintained it, no one ever visited. One night, I was doing my normal thing drinking, smoking, and playing on my phone when I heard someone say, Do you like hanging out with the dead young man? I turned around and saw a black man in his 60s wearing jeans, a checkered flannel shirt, and a gold cross necklace. I replied, Yeah, I do, actually. They don't talk much. He said, You'd be surprised how often they do. Then he asked my name. I told him and asked his name. He said, I'm Pastor Troy. My wife is buried here, and I'd like to see her. I asked if he'd like his privacy, and he said, I'm actually leaving. You have a good night, young man, and walked away. When I went home and told my mom that I met a guy named Pastor Troy, she looked at me really strange and said, Are you sure? Pastor Troy died a couple of years before you were born, son. 
She asked me what he looked like, and after I described him, she said that I was really freaking her out, because I described the man she knew was dead perfectly. It freaked me out for a while. Count ten. My friend and I were driving across a rural stretch of highway with very little traffic at night. We were having an involved conversation while he drove. Suddenly, I saw something extremely large looming in the distance right in the middle of the road. It was too dark to make out, but it looked like a huge boulder or a round object at least 10 feet high and just as wide. I screamed and pointed at it. My friend hit the brakes and swerved hard around it, thankfully missing it. No other cars were around, and as it was a one-way road, we couldn't turn around to investigate. My first thought was a giant boulder, but we were in flat desert, nowhere near mountains or hills. We called the cops to let them know, but about shit our pants. Account 11. I'm female and was about 15, home alone. I had just gotten out of the shower and put on a dress. I heard someone knocking. So I answered the door with my hair still in a towel, but peeked around the door so you couldn't tell I was in a dress. It was my landlord and his 30-something-year-old son. They were trying to talk me into letting them into the house. I said, come back later and shut the doors. They knew my parents weren't home as there was no car in the driveway. I never found out what they wanted, and they told my parents they never knocked on the door. Account 12. I haven't had anything creepy happen per se, but road rage can be terrible out here. I was once followed and threatened with assault by a guy who cussed me out, claiming his kids were in the car with him with the windows cracked so they heard everything. Thankfully, I knew he was following me and dove into a public space to deal with this guy rather than at my house. This was a few weeks back, and I am still paranoid about people following me. I reported this guy to the people who owned the public space where I stopped and wrote down his plates, holding on to them for a week. Part of me hopes he is okay and is past it. I got a sense he might have been a little buzzed or had heightened emotions, but still. Account 13. I was driving down a windy country road around 4 a.m. in the middle of nowhere to my favorite hunting spot. A bit groggy, my buddy and I came around the next bend and noticed a large bright light in the distance. As we got closer, we realized it was a large fire, and someone must have been burning wood. We continued driving and began to slow down as we approached. Two people were waving us down in the middle of the street. We rolled down our windows to hear blood-curdling screams and cries for help. We looked over and could see the fire clearly now. An old pickup truck had run off the road and smashed into a tree. The entire cab was engulfed in 12-foot-high flames. One of the bystanders screamed, There's someone in there! I could see the silhouette of a person in the driver's seat, surrounded by smoke and fire, being burned alive. The flames were too large for us to offer any help to the person. To this day... The haunting images are burned into my mind, and the sound of the cries for help is something I will never forget. It's by far the scariest thing I have ever witnessed. Account 14. Really not that scary, but I'll share. We have 86 acres in the middle of nowhere. We were driving back to the land and saw a raggedy-looking owl sitting on the power line pole by our driveway. It was molting or something, so it was very hard to distinguish any markings to figure out what kind of owl it might be. We greeted it hello and went along our way, guessing what kind it might be. The next day, my husband had to return home, but I was staying on the land to meet a friend and set him up to camp for a few weeks. So, I'm there alone in the middle of nowhere for the first time since we purchased the land. I settle down on our makeshift latrine and then Scree. Scree starts somewhere behind me. My sphincter has never reversed operation so quickly. Moments later, once my heart resumed beating, I took a deep breath and texted, Verified Screech Owl to Hubby. Then I laughed at myself and continued on my day. Account 15. Okay, so this happened to my boyfriend, 24M and me, 27F, about two years ago in the middle of the night. I decided to post it because it haunts me to this very day, and I still have nightmares about it. It was about 2 a.m. one night in September. We live about 25 minutes out of town in northern British Columbia, Canada, and our house is surrounded by the woods. Crane because here. it's such a dead road, usually we would pull Tell out of the driveway and then turn on our lights. Why? Man. I don't know, you weird know, habit. We both would do it, LMAO, not anymore. Lights on immediately. So I'm driving. I pull out to go left down the road and turn on the high beams. Then we see it. In the road is this weird, hairless, pale, humanoid creature crouching in the middle of the road. It almost seemed to be glowing. 
But that was probably because it was such a pale white and I hadn't turned off my high beams. It whipped its head at us as if it was surprised by our lights turning on. After a second, it shambles across the rest of the road in jerky movements and down into the ditch, which was about three feet deep. But that's not it. We both watched as it went down into the ditch, turned around to face us, and it stood up on its back legs exactly like a human, but not quite. Except it stood over five feet higher than the ditch taller than our car at the time. And remember, the ditch is already three feet deep, so this creature was over seven feet tall. It looked aggressive, hunched at the shoulders and leaning forward slightly as if to look at the car. And I swear I made eye contact with it. No, it was not watching us drive by. It wasn't looking at the car. It was looking through the window and it was looking right at me. Whatever it was, it was intelligent and knew that the car wasn't moving itself. It knew we were inside. I drove so slowly, turning my head and keeping eye contact with it as we drove past, and I did the same, craning its neck to watch me leave. My boyfriend couldn't see it past me at that point. Eventually, it was out of my vision and I looked back at the road. We were both completely silent. I was driving less than 10 km hour, having taken my foot off the gas when I saw something in the road. To this day, I don't really tell people because the people I tell just laugh it off or try to explain it as an albino starving bear or something. This year, his parents were visiting just before winter hit. They have a dog. Me and his mom were having a smoke on the deck, which is about six feet off the ground. It's dusk, not much light. We were on the left side of the deck. The same side we turn on the road to go to town. You can see the patch of woods where the creature would have been before, so this instance happened in the same little area. I hear a bunch of cracking twigs just as the dog goes nuts. He is a small boy, so we were surprised when he almost jumped off the deck to run in the woods. My boyfriend comes out just in time, and we see just beyond some trees, so it's obscured. A tall, lanky, white form. But we couldn't see anything else definitive, and his mom has terrible eyesight and didn't have glasses. I know it was the same creature. I got this twisting feeling in my gut. I decided to share on this subreddit because, if anything, at least some people will believe me. We don't leave our house at night. Maybe it's weird, but I want to see it again. There's such a huge difference, man. I used to think, wow, these stories are cool. I so believe in them. It was nothing compared to the awed terror I felt when I made eye contact with something I'm positive is not natural. Account 16. I was visiting a friend in rural Ohio. He and my husband had stepped inside the house, but the dogs and I were still outside enjoying the summer night, waiting for them to come back out. All of a sudden, both my little corgis start growling and backing up toward our van, something they've never done. Usually, they don't retreat if they're growling. They run up and inspect the thing they're wary of from a bit of a distance. But this time, they were backing up. Then one of them runs under our van. Then the other. Neither has ever done this. I'm still staring off into the dark, trying to figure out what they're worked up about. But it's too dark all the way across the yard, and I can't see anything at all, just the general direction they're focused on. Not even a vague size or shape of something moving. So I opened up our van and coaxed the dogs out enough that they could jump in. They didn't even want to come out that far. And then we all sat in the van until they stopped growling. But I never did see what they were worked up about, and I've never seen them behave like that again.